what are the best luxury purchases I made in 2022 that I have zero regrets about and which ones have been my worst purchases? The ones that I wish I could maybe now return? Hey everyone, if you are new here, my name is Steph. If you are a lover of all things luxury, you my friends are in exactly the right place. So make sure you join us by hitting the subscribe button and the bell down below because we get it and not everyone does. With no further ado then, I am going to start with my best purchases and why they've been some of my best purchases. And then I'm going to go on to my worst purchases. And again, with the beauty of hindsight, why they've really not worked out. So that you can shop this video super easily, I will of course pop links in the description box down below for you. My first best purchase, this would be, by the way, this is in no particular order. Uh, this is my Prada Crystal Shopper Tote Bag in the silver crystals. I'm not going to go over the story around this bag because I have been through it in a few videos now. I panic purchased it, thought I would be returning it, and it arrived. I'm so glad that I didn't. I fell in love straight away. The reason that this has been one of my best purchases of 2022, to my surprise, I have worn it a lot in 2022 and I think the reason number one it's so beautiful like if you team this with a simple outfit it really does stand out but one of the factors that has caused me to use it so much in the last and been one of my best purchases is actually the fact it's lightweight and it goes from day to night surprisingly I kind of felt like this would be an evening bag but because this particular style of the crystal bag the shopper tote again I will link it down below for you uh, to the Prada website it's actually quite a casual style of bag, like a little tote bag like this, like a crossbody, it's kind of like a larger size phone bag. I have found that I can easily take this shopping with me in the day, I can fit my phone, card holder, other little bits, but also in the evening, it does come with this strap by the way, which I use in the day, and then in the evening, I just use it with the top handles, and take it with me. So if I'm traveling, I find that this is a really versatile bag, especially if I'm like staying over somewhere, don't want to overpack. I also took this with me on holiday and it just gets so much attention. Definitely one of my best purchases. The next one following on from the crystal style is this beautiful bag here from Stella McCartney. This is the tiny Falabella bag and this is in the gold crystal version. Okay, so why is this one of my best purchases? Again, after I knew how much I used my Prada bag, I knew that I wanted a gold crystal bag because gold is usually my hardware color of choice when it comes to a lot of my designer bags. First tried this on in silver, it was beautiful. Then I went online and found that it also comes in this gold and I was completely sold. I absolutely knew this would be in my collection one day. These are vegan friendly. I think Stella McCartney, um, for a bag like this, they're at really great price points, especially compared to brands like Prada. You're looking at thousands for a Prada bag. Um, this one retails under a thousand pounds here in the UK, under a thousand dollars, I believe as well in the US. The particular, this one here, the gold one, does sell out quickly, but they're starting to bring it out in different colors as well. So hopefully it will start to be restocked, but you can top handle it, you can cross body it, you can shoulder it. And I just feel having a crystal bag, especially in a small size, it like makes a statement without taking over. So as a grab and go, kind of adding a little bit of beautifulness to an outfit, that is why I would say this is definitely one of my better purchases of 2022. The third best purchase of 2022 is a bag that I literally would not be without. I use it all the time, pretty much every day, especially throughout autumn winter. If something happened to this bag, I would go out and buy it literally tomorrow. That is how much I like this bag. This is the Givenchy Soft Antigona. This is a small size, black, smooth leather. I treat this bag really badly, but it still looks so beautiful. We don't have any scratches to say this is like a smooth leather. It's got my stuff in right now. I use this all the time. And I know the reason why. The reason why is because it's such a simple design, but it's also a bit different. Like you don't see the particular, like the soft Antigona everywhere. Because it's so simple, it goes with everything. Practicality wise, it's great. Top handle it, grab and go, shoulder it. You can take this off by the way, or cross body it. I'm mostly cross body it if I'm out all day, or just grab and go with the top handle if I'm just nipping out. And the fact we have the zip closure makes this bag secure. So for me, in terms of a practicality point of view, we can fit a bottle of water in here, all my everyday essentials. You can expand it out as well. 
this just makes total sense and this is why I gravitate towards this bag so much and literally use it as my everyday bag. My next best purchase is a pair of shoes or sandals to be exact. These are my Fendi sandals here and they have like a scrunchy effect. These are in colour tobacco with black and um, I'm so glad that I got these. I got them in the Farfetch sale actually, and throughout summer, I would wear these all the time, like with a dress, with some shorts, with a skirt. They are so comfortable. They mold to the shape of your foot, which is super important. This scrunchy stuff here, it's like a Velcro fastening, so you can, you know, it's not too tight around here, you can adjust it perfectly. Um, a really nice soft fabric material. Highly recommend these, absolutely love them. They're kind of the, the dad, style sandals that are very much in fashion right now. I think we will see this trend carry on into 2023. The next item is another one from Fendi. Um, to say that I don't actually have any Fendi bags, which surprises me. There is one that I'm definitely looking at. I will be bringing out a video soon on my 2023 wish list, so make sure you subscribe for that. But in terms of their accessories, like their fashion and the, the footwear, I really, really love. I feel like they're actually one of my favorite brands, especially in terms of the clothing. So the next item is my Fendi high waist shorts. I got these in the color caramel. And as you can see, they have the like Fendi print. So I have worn these so, so much, mostly through autumn, winter, but I did actually wear them in summer as well. I like putting them with some uh, boots, like knee high boots, some tights, and then like a jumper in winter. I would say they run fairly true to size as well. I will link them down below for you if you want to get a pair. You can also get plain pairs. Oh, and by the way, guys, we do have pockets for the mobile phone here. Very important. But like I said, they do come in other colorways, different fabrics, and I feel like this is just such a classic. Fendi have really like nailed the cut of these high waist shorts. I wear them all the time. Definitely a really great investment. My next best purchase is definitely one of my most expensive purchases ever, but one that I have zero regrets about. This is my small, trendy, CC bag. This bag's not for everyone, but I do feel like it's quite popular now. Now I do know that this bag is quite high maintenance with it being a soft lambskin. Okay, it does scratch, it does indent quite easily. So I am very careful with this bag. I'll be honest, this hasn't made this video because it is my most used bag because it is not. I would actually say, in terms of uh, using this bag, I get sometimes a bit frustrated with it because there are so many compartments inside of the bag, even though it looks quite big. Let me just show you. Because it has all these compartments, you can't actually fit like bigger items in here. And also if you do kind of concertina it out too much, the front flap here, it just won't close on the front of the bag. So I would say the trendy is smaller than what it looks like. I thought it would hold more than what it does. So there are some occasions where I have wanted to use this bag and actually it just wasn't big enough. So I needed to get something else that technically was smaller than this bag, but just fit bigger items in. But overall, I have like no regrets on getting the trendy. I think it's an absolutely classic style. I love it. I think it's just so beautiful. And when I do use it, it just feels so special. And it goes out of all my bags actually, because of the, the way the lambskin looks, it does look so luxurious. It's probably one of my easiest bags to style. So I can literally put this with anything and it really adds a beautiful kind of classic timeless chic look to whatever I'm wearing. The final item that has made it into this video in terms of one of my best purchases is my Louis Vuitton Lock Me Mini. Oh my gosh, look at this bag in color grige. This was on my wish list in 2022. I said that I wanted the Lock Me Ever bag, but um, at the time, the smallest size they did was the BB and um, they didn't do it in this grease and gold color combination. I think they did like a black and silver and I just knew that in terms of silver hardware, it's not, I prefer gold hardware so much more that I was just going to wait. Then as soon as I saw that this bag was released, they were releasing a mini size, which I'll be honest, it's quite a big bag. Like this is a roomy bag. I can even get, to say my trendy can't fit my headphones, uh, my card holder, my keys, this can at a push, but I can actually get like my full size headphones in here, a card holder, I will do a full review by the way. So again, make sure you're subscribed if you are interested in that. But you can fit so much in here because it is just one big, big compartment. I do need to get a liner for this bag because it is like this really light pink color. But in terms of um, a designer bag, this pretty much covers all bases for me. Chain strap is probably like the best thing about this bag. 
it's so beautiful. You can take this off. I can shoulder it, cross body it. It works so well. Um, so yeah, I'm so glad finally this bag came out. You can currently choose from the black and silver and they also do a pink and gold. But this one for me was definitely my favorite color and I'm not so keen on the other two. So. Now let's move on to the darker side of today's video. My worst luxury purchases of 2022. The first one is a pair of shoes these uh, these are from fendi so i love my sandals they are so so comfortable these are the slip-on style trainers they kind of have a cool platform with fendi going around uh, they are in a tobacco colorway i saw these at vista village so i did get these half price so it's not as upsetting as if i paid full price do i think these are like some of the coolest trainers i have ever seen yes i love the way that they look and maybe I need to spend longer bedding them in. But because they are, I wouldn't say they're the most heavy, like I've definitely felt a lot heavier in terms of designer shoes. Because they are slip-ons and there's no way to kind of fasten them to your feet, they do slightly slide off your feet. That is just the nature of this style of shoe. Um, I do believe I've got the right size. I maybe could go down half the size on them, but generally like this is my size. I've got the same size in the sandals and they fit perfectly. I think it's just the nature of this kind of style of shoe. So for me, I love them. I will never wear them out for where I will be walking around for quite a long time. I have worn them and I do find the backs of them rub quite a lot. I have got some like insoles in here and things around the back to try and make them more comfortable. And again, maybe I do just need to wear them in quite a bit more to make them super comfortable. But I have realized I probably prefer like trainer style where they actually fasten up so that I can put them on my foot a bit more and that they don't slip off like this style of shoe does. So lesson learned there. The second worst purchase, and this might sound ridiculous, but I kind of knew it would be one of my worst luxury purchases of 2022. It is the Saint Laurent coffee mug. Um, this was around, I think it's 95 pounds now. You can order it from the website. And I ordered one. I'll be super honest with you. One of the most, like one of the reasons that I mostly ordered this for was for having pictures with, taking pictures of this with my bags and um, because Handbagholic for me is a business I create content, just putting that out there as a reminder. That is why I got this coffee mug. But in terms of actually using it as a coffee mug, it's quite heavy, which maybe is a good thing, like good quality, it holds the heat in well. But also I find these types of coffee mugs not the most useful to use unless you are literally going on a little walk carrying it. But once it's empty, you kind of need somewhere to put a dirty mug. If you don't, you're just carrying around a heavy thing. And if you are traveling anywhere, again, it's just not practical because once you've finished your coffee, even if you get it refilled, like when you've finished it, you don't want, don't want to have something in your hand all the time, or I definitely don't. And you can't screw the lid shut. It does just have like this opening here. There's nothing you can put in it to kind of seal it. This also comes off so easily that, you know, if you tipped it up or anything like that, it would probably just come off. Like it's really not secure on here. You cannot tip this in any way, shape or form. Put that back on there. So yeah, heavy don't like the lid. Do you think it looks really cool? We've just got Saint Laurent on the front here. I knew this would be a silly purchase and I can confirm if you're actually looking for a coffee mug, I probably wouldn't go for this one unless you just want it like me for the aesthetics. The next worst purchase is another pair of shoes. So again, lesson learned here. I'm definitely learning a lot about the luxury world of shoes and maybe how I need to purchase them going forward. These are my Jimmy Choo bow shoes they are actually so beautiful i have them out in display here in my filming room and they look so perfect one has the bow on the back look at that and we have the strap one has the bow on the front so uh why were these one of my worst purchases in terms of like prettiness they're really beautiful but again it's kind of a bit like the uh saint laurent coffee mug here this bow on the front you kind of step on it when you're walking. So I find that I walk more like this, which doesn't feel so natural. And if I'm stood around, um, I can often find myself just standing on this bow. I wish that these actually came with both of them with the bow on the back, because this one just looks, I actually think this one is my favorite out of the two. I think this one looks nicer and it's more practical. So if they did a pair where the bow is both on the back of both of them and not this one on the front, 
I would definitely be inclined to purchase those. The fourth worst purchase of 2022, and it was actually going to be one of the best. It is the Christine Dior a diamond motif Lady Dior bag. I ordered the small size and it was in the matte black. I've spoken about this bag a few times on my channel and I can honestly say when it arrived, I loved it. I, still to this day, there are outfits that I put on and I want to wear that bag. I returned it, so obviously I can't. If you're a subscriber of my channel, you might already know why I returned it and that is because loads of people started messaging me saying that the coating on this particular diamond motif leather comes off and then it kind of creates these like white rings where the coating is peeling off. I literally went into store recently, I was at Selfridges in London on Oxford Street and they had a model of this bag out and it was peeling. Mine had no peeling on it because it was, it was new but I was very apprehensive that I was buying myself an expensive problem where I would ha maybe have to keep taking it back to Dior, maybe arranging exchanges and just kind of being at the mercy of their customer service. So I decided to return it. And I'm just so sad about that. And I still want to raise awareness for anyone else who wants this bag. Um, I don't know if it affects the entire batch. So in terms of potential, this bag actually had one of the best potentials in my collection because I really liked the fact it didn't have a huge logo on it. But then due to this issue, it was one of my worst purchases it broke my heart. My next worst purchase is a bag that I have had my eye on for quite a long time. I remember seeing it being sold pre-loved and I was like, I really like that. I waited a while and one eventually came up because you cannot buy this new from brand anymore. It is the Gucci Be Supreme tote bag. I still think this is a really cute bag. I have used this zero. Never left my house in 2022. One of the reasons being because I've not seen this bag in real life. It has got loads of stuffing in here right now to kind of give it some shape, but it is just so soft, like the canvas just honestly, it just squishes. It doesn't feel like the best quality bag, which I knew it wouldn't be because of the price point of this bag. It's, you know, a few hundred pounds, it's not a few thousand pounds. I do think the canvas is nice. I think the B gold B detail is really cute. It does come with a crossbody detachable strap as well and shoulder strap. But I think for me, I didn't really think this through. I like the look of the bag, but because it's, it's actually smaller than I thought it would be. And I find small tote bags that have no zip closure. They always worry me that someone could put their hand into the bag, but also if I were to, you know, the bag were to fall over, what will fall out? We do have like a little magnetic closure here, but never gravitated towards it. I don't really know what I was thinking. I do have lots of other bags of this similar size, like tote bags anyway, that I prefer more than, and I would definitely be selling this one, but this was definitely a mistake. Bag number six is one that is no longer with me, but it was an instant regret pretty much as soon as it arrived. This was my Louis Vuitton watercolor Speedy. Uh, the first issue with this bag was it was a Speedy 35, so it was even bigger than the Speedy 30. I find the Speedy is such a bulky bag that actually wearing it crossbody, that's how I like to wear most of my bags, they're, they're just too big for that for me. I bought a pre-loved version of it as well, so I knew there was wear and tear to this bag. And the reason that I purchased it was because this is one of the, the best prints I think Louis Vuitton has ever brought out. That is why I decided to go for the Speedy, um, because one came up and it wasn't at a ridiculously astronomical price. I knew it needed a lot of cleaning up, but I think what happened here is I got swept away with the idea and the dream of finally owning this particular print of bag that I maybe oversaw the fact that this style of bag, the speedy bag, I've accepted this now, isn't really my style of bag. It doesn't really work for my lifestyle. It's taken me a while to get to this point. But as soon as it arrived, I was like, it's too big. Okay, the print's beautiful, but I will, I will just never use it. If I could find a bag with that print that would suit my lifestyle more, I would absolutely love to have one, but I definitely got carried away with this one. My final worst purchase of 2022. This one hurts, and you're just gonna have to stay with me on how I explain this, because I don't regret the purchase. Um, I don't want to return this item, otherwise I would have done. But in terms of practicality, it definitely wasn't the best choice. And I knew that before going into this, but I just kind of want to reiterate that everything that I thought beforehand, uh, this bag definitely still is. Like everything was correct. So am I grabbing my Christian Dior book tote bag? Oh my gosh, I am. Uh, this is the small size, the new small size, Christian Dior book tote bag in the print, the Jardin print. Everyone said this bag 
it's basically a work of art as opposed to something that is super practical. And this bag has been exactly that. Do I want to return it? No. Do I think it is one of the most beautiful bags in my collection? Do I think it's different to everything in my collection? Yes. Okay, so stay with me. But um, in terms of actually using this bag, again, we've got a very open tote, more open than most totes. We have zero option of closure. We have no nothing magnetic, okay? It's just open. And I think this is probably emphasized by this smaller size. Again, if stuff falls over, stuff's falling out. And the reason that I went for this small size is because I wanted this print number one and they didn't do it in the next size up. But um, in terms of carrying a tote bag round, I, because you can't crossbody this, there's no option for any other strap. Like this is the only, we can only top handle this girl. I didn't want a big bag. I don't want to be lugging around a big tote bag that I can't have the option of putting on my shoulder or crossbodying. And that is why I decided to go for the small size, but then there's the downside of, like I said, things falling out a bit. So yeah, mixed feelings on this one. What I will say is I will not be buying another Christian Dior book tote bag. Again, I've decided that in terms of like having the logo on the front of the bag, obviously we can turn it round, but then it just looks like a blank stripe. I'm definitely gravitating towards bags that don't really have a logo on quite like this. And if there's anyone out there, like I was debating this, I just kind of want to throw it out there. Not practical, but they are really beautiful. <sighs> okay, that was hard. Let me know what you think to my best and worst purchases of 2022 and my reasonings why. And like I said, please do get involved in the comments down below because I would love to know what your best and worst purchases have been. Now make sure you don't go anywhere because coming up next, I'm in my latest video release here for you and over here, my entire designer bag collection of 39 bags revealing some of my best and worst. Enjoy. 